Yeah, like like the the bike setup thing. Like I think, as you said, Mick, the big thing is knowing what you're riding, um, and and kind of having a range of what the sag is for your bike. And and this can change from person to person, but sag so key. Like I have so many people come up to me at race tents, and they're like, "Oh, I want to set my bike up better." And you're like, "Yeah, cool. Like what sag are you at?" And no one knows the answer to that. Mm. And I think that's a really important thing to go back to as a consistency thing. And you can measure it in a different variety of ways and, and blah, blah, blah. I measure it with people standing up on the bike. But SAG effectively is when you're weighted on the bike, it's how deep into the suspension you are. Um, and that's kind of almost like a, a negative travel or a bit of extra travel you have left. So if your wheels are riding along and then you say hit a bump, that's a, a divot, your wheels have room to move back into that bump as well it also eases you into the travel when you're riding so if you had no sag you'd hit a point of breakaway and then you'd get jarred and then you move into your travel so it kind of makes suspension all move nicely as well and then recommended sag is important too because bike brands will recommend a sag for you and that will give you pretty much the geometry you're riding the bike in for 90 percent of the time if it's say an enduro bike because you're pedaling and you're on it the whole time so SAG is really important. I'd look at what your manufacturer recommends. Um, if they don't, you know, if it's an enduro or downhill bike, I think 30%, 30% is a good place to go um, or to start at least. And you can see what works for you. Um, if you're trail XC, maybe 25, sorry, trail riding would be trail XC. Uh, so trail riding to enduro would be 25 to 30. And then uh, XC would kind of be a 20 to 25, depending, you know, how fast you want that thing to pedal and and not bob around, but sag percentage will really dictate the the bob of the bike and the efficiency of the bike. So um, sag's a really good one to to have. It also negates the whole idea of of pressure. So a lot of people I get at tents are like, oh, I looked at some pro bike check and I weigh the same as Troy and Troy is running fifty psi more than me. Yeah, it's like yeah, okay, like there's a reason why Troy is running that much pressure the the speed you hit something adds to what you'd call a dynamic sag and that's why i use shock a lot with riders been using it with ryan a little bit as well um to show him how it works but dynamic sag factors in your ride position and, and your speed um but troy is probably running 30 percent sag dynamically when he's riding he just mm. doesn't run it that soft when you're sitting on it because he hits stuff so quickly so you kind of take the whole pressure equation out of it and then you can just look at SAG as a number. And that's a way better way to look at it. If you think it's too soft while you're riding, there are tools like ShockWiz and, and all that kind of stuff that'll give you a dynamic reading as well. And that's the, the average of kind of where you're at whilst you're riding in the travel. So I'd always go to SAG. And as I said, you know, pretty much anything over 150 mil travel, I'd pretty much be looking at 30%, 25 to 30%. It's a pretty good place to start. Definitely 30 in the back, unless the bike recommends 25. And then maybe you want your front ends differ depending where your weight's distributed on the bike. How do you measure your sag for the rear shot? So like what I position? do it sta standing. Yeah. Okay. So I'll I'll do the I'll do the thing on the video. I should have brought my bike out actually. But um, I'm not a big fan of sitting. Sitting's a measurement, and you'll still get a reading from it. Mm. But if you sit on the bike, obviously the back gets very very sag in the front doesn't get sagged enough so there's no balance there so when you're doing it you want to get on the bike um and you kind of want to get into like a semi-attack position definitely on flat ground make sure you're not facing up um hands in the bars fingers are off the brakes you'll need someone to give you a hand holding onto the front wheel or potentially have a wall there you want to bob up and down kind of three times settle in that position again make sure you're not touching the brakes and then get your friend hopefully who's there if not you can touch down to lean down move that sag ring and you want to really gently hop off the bike if you bounce off the bike, it will just push the travel and then your sag will be all wrong. Um, so it's really important to take, for me, that you take that sag measurement standing on the bike to kind of weight it out a bit more. It'll take a bit of sag off the rear and it'll add more sag onto the front. It'll get you a bit more of a balanced feel. Um, I had a mate recently who was like, just can't get full travel from a shot, can't do it, can't do it, can't do it. And he was just measuring sag from sitting. He's had way too much pressure on the thing because um, yeah. the bike was doing this. So, you know, as I said, it's just a number. It's just a point of reference. You'll change it, but it's, that's the basic place to start is setting that as a, as a percentage. Um, yeah. I had to, um, sorry, I got a phone call before I had to take it. Um, what I was going to say is like, and again, this is kind of nitpicky, I know, but 
sometimes I feel like SAG, um, just for kind of like the general public, is kind of, I feel as though sometimes a bit of a hard thing to kind of wrap your head around. I don't really know why. Um, I think I kind of, sometimes I wish that, I think I might've said this in a previous episode, but sometimes I wish that say if you've got like, whatever, 180 mil travel bike and the the sag for that bike is recommended to be 33%, like a third of its travel. Sometimes I wish that, that they would market that bike as a 120 mil like compression suspension bike and a 60 mm. mil of of negative um uh rebounds a wrong word but like yeah 60 mil of of negative travel yeah. um sometimes i think it throws people a little bit um because that's how you've got to think of it like you were saying Lockie, like if it's just to use layman's terms but if it's 33 percent sag on a 180 mil bike it means that when you're on it it's only going to have 120 mil more suspension before it'll bottom out mm-hmm. but you've got 60 mil of upwards trajectory to go yeah when you well, like if you go through a bump and it fall, wants to fall into it yeah but you're still supported in that sag too right and that comes down to the damping side so if you jump off something mm. you've still got the full 180 to use mm. Because you've because you've rebounded out, or depending how long the, the exactly. is. But I don't know what you mean like no one's ever. It's the same with bike weights, right? Like people choose bike spec OE, and they use parts that make the bike lighter because they want it to ultimately be light. It's an OE thing, and it's the same thing. No one's ever going to talk their shaft length down and say it's smaller than yeah. what it is. You know I mean? Yeah, exactly. And I, and I think this is where it gets <laughs> like it's going to get complicated with bikes because like you use yeah. jargon from like motorbikes and whatever across to bikes, but obviously they're different because like with, mm. with motorbikes, um, you've got static sag and dynamic sag and static sag yeah. is how much the bike will sag under its own weight. And then the static is with you on it. And obviously though, for a mountain bike, I mean, some do, but very minimal, but mountain bikes don't really sag under their own weight. So mm. what you're measuring all the time is the dynamic sag. Yeah. Um, Whereas I would yeah, call so- that, I would call static sag, in my instance, a rider on the bike without it moving. And then mm-hmm. dynamic yeah, sag would be them riding. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. And that's where I think that with mountain biking, you almost need to use different jargon than what you would mm. in, say, motorcycling, is because, yeah, I totally agree with you there that what I would call, because you're going to have like zero sag just with the bike by itself, what I would call static sag is the rider on it in kind of like a neutral attack position, like you were saying, Um, and then almost tune your static, uh, your dynamic sag as per what riding style you're going to do. Like if you're going to go hit dream track, you might want a static sag of way less than what you would if you were going to, yeah, ride real bumpy shit. But that dynamic thing's interesting. Like having that on, I had the shockers on Ryan Gilchrist's bike. He was down here for the weekend, just on some local track, not steep, not that quick, right? His dynamic sag is like 20%. And I was like, yeah, but your static's at nearly 30. So this isn't right. You know, and then we get to Medina and then it's like bang on 30, 32. And they're like, okay, mm. we had a bit more pressure in and then it kind of works. But, you know, that's where I find that that shock was as a tool like yeah i don't always find i don't always find the recommendations correct because it doesn't really take into account the human factor it doesn't know how you how your weight's distributed over the fork really Mm. but that number like just as a raw number to take out like you take that to a different bike park and you're like i want this dynamic sag to be the same from track to track that makes a massive difference and i think it starts to take a bit of guesswork out i think yeah i I agree i think the other thing is too that it um it helps get you in a ballpark like of course there yeah. are some people who might be new to mountain biking or whatever that don't even have a ballpark like you know they don't really know Dude, people high. who who ride don't have a ballpark like yeah i yeah. see it all the time yeah for sure. you know what I mean? and yeah. it's not a bad thing it's not that people are like being dead shits about it they just don't understand it it's just like oh how much how much tag you have oh, i don't know <laughs> it just feels good yeah, okay cool like Let's maybe yep. set a baseline and play with some stuff and see. Like that's that's all working on suspension is really it's 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 playing with things, and seeing unfortunately, unless you have a telemetry machine. 